first place you can see up on the map is Babylon, ancient Babylon. And you can see here a picture of some of the ancient uh, Babylonian relics. And Babylon is of course a particular area that is mentioned in the Bible and is mentioned in the Quran. And the people of ancient Babylon were known for a particular kind of magic. And that is that they were well known for their use of stargazing and magic. So they, they, they had, there is a relation in the magic of ancient Babylon between stargazing and astrology and magic. And they used to worship the seven stars of Babylon, the seven stars. They used to seek nearness to their gods through three things, particularly through the use of incense, the use of knots, and the use of sacrifice to other than Allah. Now we come to Egypt. And as you can see there, we have a picture of Egypt and we have some Egyptian hieroglyphics. The Egyptians were well known for using in their magic hieroglyphics, symbolism and magical words. They have many manuscripts and scrolls that are written in hieroglyphics depicting the carrying out of magic. There was a particular place where they were known for the magic that they did and you all know the story of Fir'aun and the magicians and how that came about. So this is indicating the ancient magic that took place in Egypt. Now we come to Persia. These were a people in ancient times who worshipped Allah alone. Their great military commander Rustum was one of the people who first introduced stargazing and astrology to the people of ancient Persia. What about magic in Islam? Magic in Islam is represented by letters, numbers, symbols and signs that relate to the zodiac. They added to the ancient magic of Egypt, Babylon and Persia, they added disgracing the Quran and attacking the Quran. So I want to explain to you magic in the light of an ayah in the Quran. And that ayah in the Quran is the 102nd ayah in Surah Al-Baqarah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and they followed instead what the devils had recited during the reign of Sulaiman. It was not Sulaiman who disbelieved, but the devils disbelieved teaching people magic. And that which was revealed to the two angels of Babylon, Harut and Marut. But the two angels do not teach anyone unless they say we are a trial, so do not disbelieve by practicing magic. And yet they learn from them that which by which they cause separation between a man and his wife, but they do not harm anyone through it except by the permission of Allah. And they learn what harms them and does not benefit them. But the children of Israel certainly knew that whoever purchased the magic would not have any share in the hereafter. And wretched is that for which they sold themselves if they only knew. Five points I want us to take out of this ayah. Number one, magic is something that can be learnt. Magic is not something that you are born with. Number two, magic is an act of disbelief. Number three, magic causes real and significant harm. It does not just cause illusions. It doesn't just cause you to, to see something that's not there. Number four, there is no harm without the permission of Allah. And number five, there is no such thing as good magic or white magic. As for magic in the Sunnah, it is narrated that Aisha radiallahu anha said a spell was put on the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam until he imagined that he had done a thing when he had not done it. One day he made dua and he said, do you know that Allah has shown me in what lies my cure? Two men came to me and one of them sat at my head and the other at my feet. One of them said to the other, what is ailing the man? 
He said he has been afflicted by magic. He, the other said, who have bewitched him? He said, Labid ibn al-A'asam. He said, with what did he perform the magic? Said with a comb, the hair that is stuck to it and the skin of the pollen of a male date palm. He said, where is it? And he said, it is in the well of Darwan. The Prophet ﷺ went out to the well and he came back and said to Aisha, its date palms are like the heads of devils. Aisha said, did you take it out? He said, no, Allah has healed me and I feared that it might bring evil upon the people and then the well was filled in. What is the nature of the magician? The nature of the magician is that a person cannot become a magician until they reach the highest forms of disbelief from which there is rarely any return. The shaitan lures them with promises of riches and fame, begins by asking very little. Once the person is hooked, the shaitan does not let them out of their grip. They must perform the most evil acts in order to remain as a magician. And in reality, rather than me telling you, I'd like to show you. <laughs>